It's recording. I hope it works. Do something different. <laughs> How many of you are comfortable with doing different things? You know, I think so many times we tend to get in this comfort zone and we do the same things over and over again because that's what's comfortable. <clears throat> But how many of us like to try and adventure into new areas in life? Do you like to do that? Is that comfortable? Sometimes. Sometimes it is and sometimes it's not. So the thing is that um, what I want to talk about, and when I was thinking about the, the theme of the new year, and a lot of times in the past I would preach about all things new and becoming a new creature in Christ. Um, I was thinking about this theme going through my mind of we need to do something different. Now, doing something different is not necessarily something that is good, right? Just because you're doing something different doesn't necessarily make it that it's the right thing for us to do. Amen. But what I want to focus on today is doing something that is different to better serve our Lord by the way we um, serve other people. And you probably heard this before, right? That uh, Albert Einstein, the genius, um, he said this, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results is called insanity. Now you think about it, first of all, is, well, what is insanity? What does that mean? Going, going nuts, <laughs> right? <laughs> going crazy. But how many times do we do that? We do the same thing over and over again because maybe it's comfortable and we don't want to change and we still expect different results to take place. In Romans, the 12th chapter, the Apostle Paul says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a, a living sacrifice. Well, let's take a look at that word, sacrifice, for a moment. What does sacrifice mean to you? Like sacrificing a chicken. <laughs> sacrificing a chicken. <laughs> what do you do when you sacrifice a chicken? Cut off its head. You cut off its head. Okay, but is that a sacrifice? No. Because... The chicken sacrifices. <laughs> yeah, it's just like that uh, that story, you know, the, the, the chicken and the pig, right? No. They, they, they said they were going to do a breakfast, right? They're gonna do a fundraiser breakfast, and the chicken says, "Well, I'll donate. I'll donate the eggs." And the pig says, "Yeah, for you, that's a donation, but for me, it's a total sacrifice, right? Because in order for you to have the bacon, <laughs> what has to happen to the pig? They kill the pig. They have to, he has to sacrifice his own life. Life. So th that's what I want you to understand is what this word sacrifice really means—a living sacrifice, because. When you, when you die physically, how can you actually be li living? How can you be a living sacrifice? So what does that mean, to be a living sacrifice? Have you ever thought about that? And I think God is wanting for us not to die, be dead physically, but that our lives would be a living sacrifice. In other, in other words, we're constantly serving other people. This is something that is holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. You ever think about that? I mean, we think about, yeah, when we sing songs and we pray and we read our Bible that this is a worshiping God. But again, um, I see a lot of people, and I've talked to a lot of people, who tell me that they can stay home, read the Bible, 
and pray and maybe even sing along with the radio and they think that's sufficient and that is okay worship. But when I think about it and what the Word of God says, it says that we should not conform to the patterns of this world. So what does that mean to conform to the patterns of this world? Going with the crowd, right? We shouldn't do this. He says, do not do this. But be what? Transformed. And how do you be transformed? By the renewing of your mind. And how do you renew your mind? Well, when you're in fellowship, that's part of renewing your mind. But you have to have everything that goes along with that. The teaching of God's Word. And to actually practice the things that God's Word teaches you to do. You see, the thing is that a lot of people, they read God's Word, they hear the teaching of God's Word, but they don't apply it to their lives, and if they don't apply that to their lives, then are they really making a transformation of their character? Because all of us have baggage in the past of things that we do that we tend to hold on to. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We, we need to take the things of the past and learn from them. He says, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, <clears throat> do not think of yourselves more highly than you ought. But rather think of yourself with sober judgment. Now we talk about sobriety, right? And usually what happens around the holidays is people want to have a great time and celebrate the holiday. <laughs> but we know that the, the police are out there watching for people that are erratically driving around, showing some kind of unsobriety. So when we think about celebrating the holidays, we <clears throat> having a sober mind? Or are we just having a great time? So we ought to have sober judgment in accordance to the faith God has distributed to each of you. Now this is the, the whole, I'm going to read to you the whole chapter of Romans, the sixth chapter, um, without backing up where I'm <laughs> Romans 6, what shall we say then? Shall we keep on sinning so that grace may increase? Uh, some other versions, so that grace may abound. <clears throat> So shall we keep on doing the bad things because the more bad things we do, God's going to give more grace to you to forgive you of your sin. Is that the way we're supposed to be living our lives? And, and some versions say, God forbid, may it never be. By no means. We are those who have what? Died. To sin. What does it mean to die to sin? In other words, that's the way things used to be. Now we need to be transformed when we know what the right thing to do is. How can we live in it any longer? In other words, when you get rid of a sin, are you still involved in that sin? Or have you been transformed? Do you do things differently? And I think the problem with a lot of us is that we want to be different. We want to be transformed. We want to put on the new character of Christ. But yet, we tend to hold on to the past. And we're wondering why things, things are not different. 
You see, we have to be willing to do what God's word says. He says, or do you not know that all of us, okay, who's all of us? Everybody. Everybody. Everybody? Yeah, everybody. Yeah, no. all. All of us who were baptized yeah. into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. In other words, he's talking to Christians. He's not talking to everybody because some of them haven't given this commitment of being baptized into the Lord Jesus Christ. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a what kind of life? A new <coughs> a new life. And if you're thinking that maybe <coughs> things are not going right in your life is because <coughs> you hold on to the old life expecting to have a different kind of life, you know what? <laughs> Albert Einstein said that's insanity when you do the same thing and expect different results. For we have been united with him in his death, in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. So if we expect to be different, to, to have a better life, then we must die to our sin. And when we die to our sin, we will be resurrected to live a what kind of life? A different life. A new life. For we know that our old self, the way we used to live, is crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with. You get rid of it. But why do we keep on holding on to the past ways and expecting things to be different? So the body ruled by sin might be done away with that we should no longer be what? Slaves to sin. Now, you understand this word slave? Well, what is a slave? It's when colored people is a slave to the white person. Being colored, Back. it's when people are slaves to some when they slaves to somebody else. Because I'm a slave. Okay. In a, in a sense, we all are slaves, right? Mm -hmm. But what are you a slave to? What is your master? God. You see, Jesus. if we are slaves to sin, yeah. our master is the devil. No. Right. Huh? Yeah. yeah. If we're doing the wrong thing, then who is our master? The devil is our master. We are supposed to be dying ourselves to sin, the old way of life. And if we're serving God, then who is our master? God is our master if we're doing the right thing. So, so the, the, to determine who are we slaves to, look at your life and say, well, I, I'm a slave. And, and you know, it's kind of kind of interesting because the, the ones that, um, a lot of people that are working on the railroad, you know, they don't even like their job. <laughs> but why do, they, why do they work at the railroad? Is it just because of the money? I know there's some people that enjoy working on the road, but a lot of them I hear complain about it, <laughs> complain about the benefits, and, and, and they're going out there and buying all the nice things that the money will afford, but where are their families? Their families are broken up because they spend all their time working. In fact, a lot of them want the extra hours, right? the extra time in so that they can get more money and they work their whole life expecting this huge retirement and guess what happens to a lot of them? They die before they even reach their retirement because of the stress that it brings about, because of the depression maybe of not being able to spend their time with the ones that they love and then they get divorces and all this thing that happened. 
They're slaves to what? To work. Actually, it's called sin, right? Yeah. Because their God is the things that they serve, the things that they buy, and in order to take care of those things that they buy, they got to work more hours. But you see, the thing is that when we start trusting in God, then we're slaves to God and we're doing it His way. We're doing something a little bit different. Because everyone who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with Him. You see, this thing is a lot of, the, the problem is a lot of people think that if they are more dedicated to God, that they are more dedicated, more dedicated to Christ, that they would have to sacrifice all that stuff, the sinful ways. They gotta stop drinking, they gotta stop drugging, they have to um, give up the nice things they think, okay? But who are they trusting in? Who are they trusting? They're trusting their own ability to provide for themselves and for their family. But when we start understanding that when we are slaves to God, it, it, it kind of like in our mind doesn't make sense that if we give God first place in our life, then all of everything else will fall into place. And I know because that's the way I used to live, the old side, you know, even though I was a Christian, I used to do things to force my way to get where I want to be in life. But when I started to realize that, first of all, if I trust in God, and honor Him, that's doing something different so that my life can fall into place according to how God has designed for me to live my life. Do you understand what I'm saying here? Yes. Why is it so difficult though? Why is it so difficult for us to die to ourselves, realize that God's way is the best way, and doing the same thing that I've done in the past, we need to change that and allow God to change our lives so that we can have a better relationship with Him and better relationship with other people. And that's the hardest thing for us to do is transform. Don't do the same thing over and over again, but do it God's way. You think that maybe the, the creator of our lives, the one who made us, knows what's best for us and the way we should live our lives? Mm -hmm. Don't you think if we honor him and let him take care of us and control us, wouldn't that be a much better thing than to allow the previous way that we used to live, the way of Satan, the way he tries to take us down, making us think that that's a way to live our lives, that if we do it his way, that life would be better. You see how insane that is? And we think that if we do it our way, that's a better way than God's way. That's ridiculous, if you think about it. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. One time. And because he overcame death, then he's not going to ever have to die again. He won't ever die again. And in the same way, when we accept Jesus Christ that the one that paid the penalty for our sin that's called grace we deserve death right we deserve to be punished for what we have done wrong but he paid it all for us he died to sin once for all but the life he lives he lives to God the life we live we should live for God in the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let... Okay, let me start over. Do not 
What does do not mean? Don't. 